Hello everyone, I'm Ryan with What Game Next. Uh, today I'm going to be opening a case of Flesh and Blood Crucible of War. <clears throat> There's still a legendary or two that I'm uh, missing from the set, so um, I wanted to open up some boxes, talk about the game, and um, just kind of explore a little bit. So let's get to it. So, Crucible of War is the third set um, of Flesh and Blood. <clears throat> Welcome to Ra Wraith was the first set, and the second set was Arcane Rising. Uh, Crucible of War is a supplemental set, um, so you're not really intended to draft with it or anything. It fleshes out all of the classes that were in the first couple uh, sets, and leads us into Monarch, which is the next set coming out. All right. So for the most part, I'm just going to sort these by, um, by class and rarity. So as you can see in the bottom um, portion right here, there's a, a little rarity indicator right there. Um, the gray is common, also has a little C in the middle of it. So, dust from the packs. All right, Guardian, Guardian, Wizard, Wizard, Echonologist, Ranger, uh, Rune Blade, oh wait, Ninja and Wizard, there we go. Um, all right, so we have a rare ninja card, Rushing River. We have a rare high-speed impact from Mechanologist right there. And we have a mythic foil right out of the gate with Rattlebones, which is a Rune Blade card. All right, warrior. Let's put these in, in alphabetical order. Guardian, Mechanologist, Ninja, uh, Warrior, Wizard, no, Ranger, Rune Blade, Warrior, Wizard. All right. Guardians first. Guardian. All right, generic. We'll put there. All right. Okay, so we have a rare ninja card, a rare rune blade card, and a foil common whirling mist blossom, which is a ninja card. I think I'll just put it with the commons and then I'll sort them out later. All right. Um, wizard. I really like what they've done so far with Wizard. I think it's an interesting class. It still needs a little bit more to it um, to really get going, I think. But... I think it's close, and I, th I like what they've done so far. So we'll move these over a little bit. All right, Rune Blade, Ranger, Brute. Okay, Generic. Oh, Generic Rare, sorry. And then we have the Ranger Weapon, which is a rare, the Red Liner. This is a new weapon in this set. And then we have a rare Foil Towering Titan, which is a Guardian. Let me just refresh. 
slash switch real quick and make sure that okay yeah I want to make sure the title was updated all right common ninja mechanologist warrior rune blade brute generic okay rare generic action promise of plenty rare ranger card pitfall trap and then a foil sleep dart which is a common thanks uh kenta kenta you kenta yui i think is probably how that's pronounced um I'm hoping, I, ha I haven't gotten Shiana yet, that's what I'm really hoping to, to pull, um, but I wouldn't cry about getting a tunic. Guardian, Rune Blade, Rune Blade, Brute. Okay, we've got a Mavrian Skies, our second one, this one red instead of yellow. Um, we've got a Mythic Snag. Which is generic and we have a foil crater fist cold foil because this is first edition man that is very nice looking so that's that's a nice little pull already okay rune blade mech guardian brute Warrior, warrior, ninja. Okay, rare guardian, or sorry, yeah, rare guardian card, sorry, towering titan. Rare wizard card, cindering foresight. And foil rare, barraging bighorn, uh, which is a brute. Uh, so who all um, plays Flesh and Blood right now, or who's just um, kind of checking it out? I'd be interested to see how many people are, are just interested in checking out the game, haven't actually played it yet. Ranger, Ranger. Hero. Um, warrior. Brute. Oh wow, I just flew past that. Okay, so rare warrior card, another rare brute, and then a foil rune chant token. Um, I'm just gonna put the tokens in one pile. Just checking it out. <clears throat> so, Snooky late. Have you just started looking at the game or you just kind of saw the stream and wanted to look at it or have you done any any looking at the game at all before this guardian ninja Okay, so we got another Cindering Foresight for Wizard. Did I get one of those before? I thought I did. Maybe I haven't. Okay. Uh, reinforce the line, generic. And a foil push forward common uh, warrior card. Do I buy singles? Um, no, I, I mean, I have bought a couple singles, um, from the first two sets. I bought some foils, uh, that was before Unlimited was announced. Um, but in general, just like buying, uh, singles just to buy singles, um, not really. So the game, uh, Snooki is actually pretty straightforward if you've played other card games. 
Um, obviously, the main the main purpose of the game is to to bring your opponent's health down to zero, like in mini card games. However, how you accomplish it is a little bit different. Uh, rare ninja. Oh, we got a mythic. Gaze of the Ages for Wizard. And a foil rare for Mechanologist. Yeah, I agree drawing blank. Um, this this uh, TCG is one of the best ones to come out in a long time. And I've, I've played just about all of them. Um, at one point or the other. Um, if you look at my other videos on this channel, I'm currently in a Magic uh, Commander League um, sealed box, which is pretty much the only way that I'll that I'll play Magic anymore is like in a sealed environment because I just don't really enjoy a lot of the stuff in the game that much, like uh, the resource mechanics. Um, however, this game the resource mechanic is awesome. So we have a uh, Barraging Bighorn. Another Rushing River, and a Foil Consuming Volition, uh, which is Rune Blade. So in this game, there's three, three colors of cards. There's blue cards, like Dauntless here. Um, there's yellow cards, like Pitfall Trap. And there's red cards, like Mauvry and Skies. Uh, the difference between them is the power of the effect on them. So the blue cards have the, the lowest power version of the effect. Uh, yellow is middle and red is high. Um, and then in addition, in the upper corner here is the number of resources you get by pitching this card. Um, so blue cards all pitch for three, uh, yellow for two, and red for one. And then in the other corner, Right here is how much it costs to play the card. So, for instance, this one costs zero. Um, but they can cost any amount, really. There's some that, that are quite expensive. And so you pitch cards from your hand in order to cast your um, abilities and spells and stuff. And so you never end up in a position where you don't have resources to um, do the things you want to do. You always have something you can do, uh, just depending on what's in your hand. And you, since you start with a weapon, and you have it through the whole game, like Romping Club here, you can always pay for the ability to attack with the weapon, um, even if you don't have any action cards to attack with, which is a really nice uh, change of pace. Ooh, that's Wizard. Rune Blade, Ninja, Rune Blade. Okay, so we have a, another Towering Titan, a Promise of Plenty, and a Foil, not even going to try and pronounce its workshop, for Mech. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that happens. So um, what uh, Drawing uh, Blank is saying is um, when you're uh, playing against Mechanologist, um, they have a tendency to boost a lot and play a lot of stuff, which um, does happen. But if you can outlast mechs, which is typically what I think the, the best strategy against them is, um, is use your cards early for defense and... Uh, we got a Vizrai token. Um, and uh, trying to avoid as much damage as possible for them while getting in what you can. We have a Crane Dance, a Dauntless, and a Foil Out for Blood. Um, avoiding the, the early damage as much as you can. Um, and then if they're boosting a lot, um, and playing a lot of cards, they're gonna they're gonna clear their deck pretty quick, um, and then the cards that you've pitched and stuff like that will still be there for you to 
try and close the game out with. So what I'd recommend there is like pitching more powerful uh, damage cards in the early game against mech so that once you outlast through their initial onslaught, then all you're drawing is like your reds. Um, I think that's probably a good good way to play against them when they're doing that. Which brings up another really cool mechanic in this game, which is the the way that your resources that you use during the game end up on the bottom of your deck. Uh, here's one of the new young heroes. Um, high speed impact and a foil swing fist. Think later. Uh, which is brute. So the cards that you pitch for resources end up on the bottom of your deck. And so if you kind of remember what you've pitched during the early parts of the game, then you'll know when you hit the end of your deck. Um, and ideally you would know what you will start drawing um, at that point. That does require a very good memory though. Wow, a lot of tokens in this one. Okay, so Cindering Foresight, another Rushing River, and another Foil Swing Fist, think later. Yeah, so I, I bought into this game um, near the beginning of, beginning middle of July, somewhere around there, um, after Team Covenant started uh showing it off um i bought into their first wave and stuff like that um i got fairly lucky i got a couple legendaries um no fables all right so another mavrian skies a yellow one this time uh reinforced the line and a foil cash in. That's cool looking. So one thing would be really cool is seeing what what changes that they make in Monarch. Uh, apparently, Monarch is going to be, you know, when the the game comes to, basically, it's real starting point um, where they really want it to go from. Um, there was some talk on the Team Covenant stream today about that, and some of the consensus is that um, it could be regarding regions, like cards that are for specific heroes from specific regions. So if you want to play, you know, a certain card, it may be available to like Azalea, the, the Ranger, and uh, I forget the merchant's name, um, the merchant, because they're both from the same region, so they would both be able to play that card, but you know, someone else who's not from one of those regions wouldn't. Oh, here's a Death Dealer. All right, so we have another Pitfall Trap. We got a Mythic, Poison the Tip. And then a Foil Common, Soul Bead Strike for Ninja. So far, the best best thing we pulled is this uh, cold foil crater fist. Pretty nice, but we still have a long way to go. So, but yeah, I really think this uh, this game has legs. Um, it's really unfortunate that they had to. Well, they they didn't have to, but they chose to launch. So we have a zephyr needle. Another Mythic, Arg Smash for Brute. And then a Foil Sutcliffe's Research Notes for Runeblade. Um, it's really unfortunate that they had to launch the game when they did. I mean, they didn't have to. They said in, the, um, in some interviews that they could have postponed it, um, but they decided to launch anyway. Uh, and it's just kind of a shame because this game really shines. Um, when you're playing head to head with people um, in person, I think. Generic. Warrior. Guardian. 
Ranger. Okay, so we have a Rock Slide Trap. Another Crane Dance. And then a Foil Brutal Assault. Oh, that's cool the way the purple on there um, highlights. Oh, that one's generic, not Brute. Stream's going good so far, Blind Dead. Thanks for asking. Um, we're just cracking packs and talking about the game. So if you want to talk about Flesh and Blood, what you think about the game, um, any cool pulls that you've pulled, um, anything, any cool deck ideas that you might be trying out, I'm, I'm down to hear any of that stuff. Okay, we got another Crane Dance, yellow... Pitfall Trap, and another Foil Barraging Bighorn. <laughs> you talk about it all day. Uh, do you do you find that's the case uh, drawing a blank? I don't. Uh, oh, that's cool, uh, Blind Dead. Uh, welcome to the stream. Um, I haven't really found that the foils uh, buckle at all, um, or Pringle, or however you want to call it. Um, unlike the the Magic set, um, I just opened Commander Legends on stream a day or two ago, and all of the regular foils. Um, in that box that I opened just completely uh, turned into Pringles on that. Uh, so right now I have them like under a bunch of stuff being weighted down trying to flatten them so that when I play my game on, uh, what is it? That game is Saturday at four. <clears throat> I'll be streaming Sealed Box Commander where we opened a box of Commander Legends and we built a Commander deck out of it. And... Um, We'll be playing that. So we have Centauri Saber. Oh, another Mythic, Breeze Rider Boots. Nice. Oh wait, that's Ninja. Okay. And then a Foil Crane Dance. Thanks, Blind Dead. Um, I, I've i run events for Versus two-player card game um, in my local area and at uh, conventions and stuff. And so when they do that, um, Upper Deck gives us some giant cards to give out as prizes. And I always pick one to be made that's one that I really like the card and I want to keep it. So we have uh, Ultron's level three here. We have Venom behind me would like my shirt and uh i also have hulk from thor ragnarok over on this wall and i have a uh, buffy uh first evil uh main character card in my game room yeah versus versus was good in its original incarnation um but i also really like the new one um it's an lcg and not a TCG anymore, which makes it way easier to keep up on the, the sets. Um, it also has like a better, better comeback mechanics um, because it's based on the number of wounds that your main character takes. And they can only normally inflict one per turn, so um, you don't feel like you get rushed down as much. You can't get like one turn killed for the most part. Um, Promise of Plenty. And then a foil sleep dart. Oh, did he? Do you know which, which uh, card he got banned from the original verses? I'd be curious to know about that. So far in the versus two player card game, there have been a few bans, but what they do is they ban the card and then they print a new version to replace it in, in a set 
that comes out after. Um, so like original Thanos from the from the base core uh, set for the game um, got banned, and then all right we have a Zen state. Oh, Mythic Coax a Commotion. That's a good one. And then Foil Riled Up for our foil. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, Blind Dead probably can't say too much about how the company, you know, feels about certain things. But um, I'll personally say I think that the starter deck scalping is a little much. There's nothing really special about the starter decks um, and what's in them. So I think that, you know, as a person who wants to see the game flourish, I think it's it's bad in general for people to be scalping like starter decks. I can see like the heavy prices on the first run um, boxes of the first two sets, but starter decks are something that are intended to get people into the game. And I feel like uh, doing that's just overall going to stunt the, the growth of the game. Emerging dominance foil. However, um, there are some companies uh, online that are building like starter decks and starter blitz decks and stuff like that out of commons um, that people can buy. And I think that's really great for the community. I think that's awesome. For everybody who's doing that, that kind of thing. Uh, my plan for my extra commons is to build blitz decks out of them. And then after all of this COVID stuff ha is over um, and we're back in game stores again, I plan on just giving out like, here's a blitz deck. Um, to get people to uh, try the game out. All right, so we have a Reinforce the Line. Another Mavrian Skies, blue. Oh, Foil Mythic, or sorry, not Mythic, Foil Majestic uh, Purifier. Super cool. That's a good pull. So I've had, I got two Cold Foil Majestic equipment out of this box. Not a bad box. Yeah, I don't I honestly don't think the the welcome to Wraith starter decks are gonna be worth like a ton of money in the future. I could see maybe a small premium on them just because they're interesting. I have a full set of them over there on my shelf. Um but there's no cards in them that are unique anymore now that you can get lunging press like in crucible and stuff like that and uh or they that didn't even have lunging press in it did it uh, it had a springboard somersault um <clears throat> and i mean i guess for a collector aspect it's kind of interesting but i i think legend story is going to um put out uh unlimited versions of those decks and uh, things will be corrected at that point, I think. Yeah, that is definitely um, true. The, the whole pandemic thing has caused a lot of games that were previously pretty cheap to get. Um, and I guess sports cards too, which I'm not really into sports cards. Uh, but I do play a bunch of another Pitfall Trap. Oh, and a Foil, Mavrian Skies. Um, I am into a bunch of other CCGs, uh, Decipher ones and, and some other ones. Uh, Middle Earth CCG. And prices on that stuff has skyrocketed since the pandemic started. Oh, and there's Ira. Oh, and then Reinar right after. Um, it's nice that, that they printed the Iris stuff in Crucible so that to make her legal for, uh, oh, and Anathos. A lot of tokens in this one. Uh, Towering Titan, Cindering Foresight, 
foil snapback. Now that's a cool looking foil right there. I love the foiling in this game. Um, to make her legal in Blitz. Um, I haven't played the Babylon 5 CCG. No. Um, the old Lord of the Rings, um, Old Middle Earth, uh, Star Trek CCG, Star Wars CCG. I have over there. I didn't play the TCG or anything like that. Um, Dragon Ball Pan Panini, uh, Dragon Ball Super, Transformers. I'm just looking at stuff that's over on my shelf. Uh, Warhammer Champions, Destiny. Those are all all games that I've played at least recently. Um. I didn't spend a lot of money on the physical um, Lord of the Rings card game, but that was one of the first card games that had a digital version. Um, and I actually spent a lot of, of time and money investment in playing the online version of the Lord of the Rings um, Decipher game. And I was very sad when that finally closed down. All right, another Brajing Bighorn. Got us a mandible claw. And a foil poison the tip. Yeah, I've recently started buying some of the physical cards for the Lord of the Rings card game because my ultimate goal is that for a lot of the old games um, are either to buy product and make decks that I can just sit down and play with people um, or to build cubes out of them so that um, so that I could sit down with people and draft which is like my favorite thing to do in any card game all right riled up reinforce the line so we have a reinforced line twinning blade Non super cool foil double sided, uh, but still a good card. And then a foil dauntless. Yeah, I agree, that twinning blade. I mean, the only thing that I that I really want is um, Shiana, which is why I'm doing this box opening uh, to see if I can pull her. Um, I also don't have a tunic. Those are like the only two things that I'm like, it'd be nice to have. I've got um, Skullcap for Ranger, which is my favorite class. I've got the boots for Wizard. Um, I've got the uh, leggings for a brute. All right, another Dauntless. Oh, another Mythic, Runeblade Barrier. And a foil Redliner. There we go, that caught, that caught the light there pretty good. Yeah, I've got gotten pretty lucky on getting the cards that I'm kind of interested in for the classes that I really want to play. Um, my main class that I like is Ranger, and then I'm really interested in Wizard, although I think it needs like just a little bit more um, since it's such a unique class the way it plays. Guardian. Okay, another Promise of Plenty. We got a Benji. Uh, I'll put that with the ninja stuff. And then a foil rising ether. Rousing ether. I mean, sure, you hope you don't pull, pull it in your display, but at the same time, it's better to have a non-foil tunic than no tunic at all which is where I'm currently at. So 
Would I rather pull Shiana? Sure, but um, if I happen to open a tunic, I'm not going to be sad about it. All right, another Barraging Bighorn, another Rushing River, and then a foil workshop of guy that or woman that I cannot pronounce the name of. Yeah, take take what you get and you hope for for something good. So, you make the best with what you got. Now, one thing that is really nice about this game also is that even though with Unlimited, the legendaries are like 80 to 100-ish dollars a piece, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, Barraging Bighorn, Dauntless, and then a foil out for blood. It's Rune Blade. No, it's Warrior. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, Blind Dead, thanks for stopping by the stream. I appreciate it. Sure, OP app, got it. Um, but what I was saying is, even though the legendaries are 80 to 100 bucks each, somewhere around that neighborhood, and the, the fables, of course, are way higher. Um, but the nice thing about the game is that you don't really need those to, to be super competitive. I mean, I guess at the top levels of competition, having the the legendaries is really good. But at the middle levels, I think probably anywhere from store events to probably regionals, that type of stuff. I think that you can be super competitive without any legendaries at all. So Crane Dance, another Dauntless. I feel like I have a whole pile of Dauntless. And a foil springboard somersault. Now that's a cool pull. I like that a lot. Yeah, so I also have <clears throat> over there two boxes of uh, Welcome to Wraith Unlimited that I'm going to be opening probably not tonight, um, but soon. Just to see if I can pull... Um, something else that I either don't have or if I have it then I can trade it you know if I get a duplicate legendary or something um, but I got two boxes of that I opened four boxes of alpha welcome to wraith I think four arc and I still have two sealed arc boxes um, first edition Oop. Crane Dance, Unified Decree, Mythic, and Crush the Weak, Foil. That's pretty. So I'm probably not going to open the <laughs> the Welcome to, or sorry, the Arc uh, First Edition boxes, um, at least not anytime soon. If something unfortunate happens to the game, then maybe maybe I'll open them. Oh, there's a Kadachi and an Azalea. So what's everybody's favorite class to play at this point? Or I guess even hero, because the heroes play very differently. Um, so we have Data Doll. Oh, this that's why that's messing me up that's a common uh, we have a high speed impact and a foil consuming volition that art is something else ninja brute i can i can feel that ninja is really interesting i like how it's like death by a thousand cuts type of thing um, i also like how ira plays quite a bit differently than uh, Katsu does. All right, token. 
I love how much, like all of the classes that have two heroes now, I love the way the game and the way you build your deck flexes based on um, the hero and what the hero brings to the class. Oh, we got our mandible claw going the other way. Another Mavrian Skies. And a foil Promise of Plenty. Okay, so Kenta, Kenta Yui, I, I'm going to put you on the spot here. So you don't, you like playing everything except for Guardian and Runeblade. What about those two classes don't you like? And um, do you think it would change um, if there was a, another hero in those classes that you could play? Guardian, Wizard, Ninja, Mech. Okay, so we got another Cindering Foresight, a Rushing River, and a Foil Reinforce the Line. I'm still waiting, Kenta. I'm I'm really curious. Uh, what what about those classes you don't like? And you know, if you think a different hero could solve the the issue, or whether you think it's just the class and the way that it works. Okay, we got another towering titan. Another plasma purifier, but this one's not foil. So we got two of those now. And another foil consuming volition with the sick art. So for Guardian, you don't like Bravo. And you pulled four platings. <laughs> oh wow. That's a lot of platings. Um Yeah. I think what we'll see in Monarch is at least one new hero. Uh, for every class and it may be that the new hero is just an adult version of some of these young heroes that we got in crucible but i would be shocked if we don't see at least um one more hero for every class and uh, in addition possibly one or two new classes or new cards um for like merchant who has no cards currently Okay, we got another Zephyr Needle. Oh, another Mythic Snag. And another Foil Sleep Dart. I think Guardian is really interesting to play with the mix of like defensive stuff along with just the big, huge hits. Um, was watching team covenant uh do their flesh and blood stream today and they had a couple turns where um zach who was playing guardian just waylaid steven for like 13 points of damage um i believe that that one if i remember right was like the second turn of the game so he just <laughs> waylaid him for 13 points of damage and uh steven had to throw basically his whole hand and all of his equipment in front of it uh, to bring it down to three so that he wasn't uh, didn't have to discard his arsenal card. All right. So we have Talishar. The cool generic equipment. We have an Edge of Autumn, Ira's weapon. And a Foil Mythic Massacre. Now that is some cool art right there.
Yes, Runeblade is a very passive play style. Um, I feel like, especially with the cards they have now, I think there is a version that you can play uh, with the cards that are available that's more just doing attacks and then the rune chants are like secondary to the the plan but i think for the most part it kind of wants to do that you know can't hit me build up and then smack you for a million little bits of damage that you can't touch or you can't resist okay so we have a crane dance a pitfall trap and another foil snapback with the cool art with the ether trail thing going on but even if you don't like the rune blade and the token thing and the way that 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 all works you still have to admit that it's cool how varied that class is from say you know guardian or brute um within the structure of the game like how how far apart they are in style and the way you play them and the way you build their decks um, it goes to say something about the game itself when you can have that much variation within at what's at this point a very small card pool okay Okay, reinforce the line. Promise of plenty. And a foil crane dance. One thing about small sets though. Like, Crucible is a fairly small set, I think, compared to the other two. Um, the number of duplicates you get, wow. But on the plus side, I'll be able to turn a lot of these into really fun little Blitz decks um, that I can hand out to people for free. Okay, we got a Zen State. I think that's our second one in two boxes. A High Speed Impact. And a Foil Brutal Assault. With the cool purple foil thing going on. So for you um, people that are watching right now, for everybody who's watching, do you play... What is the game that you're playing the most right now? Is it Flesh and Blood? Is it something else? I keep putting this in the brute pile because it looks like a brute card but it's not okay cash in all right oh cash in's the rare so we have cash in we have tripwire trap and the only one i think i didn't have yet is the foil quicken token so there we here we go it's cool looking Yeah, so what, what game is it that is your primary game right now, um, and why that game? Is it just because you've been playing it for a long time and it's what you know? It's because you really like something about it, or some other reason? Guardian, Runeblade, Guardian. Okay, so we have a Rushing River. Another Promise of Plenty. And another Foil Rune Chant token. Two tokens in two packs. And we're almost at the halfway point here. So thank everybody for sticking with me to talk about this game and really anything else you want to talk about. All right, we have a Rock Slide Trap. Another Cindering Foresight. And Foil Increase the Tension.
I'm glad I have a large table because with all these classes, it could be really difficult to sort all this stuff uh, if, you, if I didn't have this room av available. Wizard. Brute. Neck. Oh. High speed impact. A Dauntless. And what is a really cool foil, Torrent of Tempo. Yeah, that is so cool looking. But it's a common. And our last pack in box two. All right. Sledge of Anvilheim. Another Towering Titan. And a foil push forward. So, uh, for, for it, Wheezy? Yeah. Um, so, yes, I've got, so far, a foil Crater Fist, cold foil. Um, cold foil Plasma Purifier along with a regular one. Um, the Breeze Rider boots are okay, and then a Foil Massacre. So I've got quite a few good Foil Mythics, I think. And we still have two boxes to go, so we could, oh, also uh, there was one, uh, the Twinning Blade. I got another twinning blade, which is really nice. So, so far, some pretty good stuff. Not, you know, what I'm hoping for, but uh, Barraging Bighorn, another Dauntless, and Foil Out for Blood. So how about you, Wheezy? Did, have you uh, opened a lot of Crucible? Um, and if so, any any awesome pulls? I definitely like talking about you know the cool stuff that everybody's opened. Okay, we have another Dauntless, another Rushing River. And a foil blessing of serenity. Pull rate for fables is one in 40 boxes, whatever that works out to. So, um, yeah, it's like one in 10 cases, exactly. So Wheezy, have you only opened um, Crucible of War? Um, or have you gotten boxes of other sets before this? And uh, Kenta Yui, which uh, you're getting 10, 10 or eight displays, so two cases. Are they all the same set? Or are you splitting them up? Are you getting one of each of the unlimited sets? What are you doing there? I keep putting that one in the wrong. All right, so Towering Titan. Oh, we got a Mythic. Heron's Flight for Ninja. And a Foil Meet and Greet. Definitely not, not who you would want to meet or greet. Ah, so one box of each so far. Nice. 
yeah, I'm looking back there. I'm pretty sure I have, I opened four boxes of Welcome to Wraith. I opened four or five boxes of Arcane Rising and four boxes of Crucible before this. Um, I have three more boxes of Crucible over there, two unlimited Welcome to Wraith that I haven't opened yet. Mech Warrior. So would, would anybody here or has anybody here um, played in any online events or played, has anybody here not played at all? Um, that's interesting as well. So we have a crane dance. Oh, another mythic for our ninja here, find center. And then foil rare pitfall trap. Hi, Cy Tempest. Um, no, I don't, I don't have a single store or anything like that. I'm just a guy who likes to stream games, mostly card games. Uh, so I stream lots of different card games, um, but I don't really sell much right now. Uh, if you're looking for singles though, there's a bunch of really cool sites um, that do sell flesh and blood singles, um, including Team Covenant. They have, uh, they have a bunch of singles on their site as well. Uh, but let's see, Fab Armory is another one that I think I bought from before. Guardian Generic Runeblade. Okay, we got another right-facing Mandible Claw. Another Mavrian Skies. Oh, this is cool looking. Cold Foil Reaping Blade. I don't know if the camera's doing it justice, but that is really nice looking Cold Foil. It's a really nice Cold Foil. Oh, that's cool, Psy Tempest. Um, any any reason in particular that you're going to be selling for Flesh and Blood um, and, as opposed to other games? Or is this really the only one that you've bought product for at this point? Man, that coal foil is super nice looking. All right. Generic. Okay, so we have a Promise of Plenty. Our second coax a commotion. Really nice card. And then cold foil increase the, or not cold foil, uh, foil increase the tension. I've got cold foil in my game, in my head now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, James, the guy who created the game and runs Legend Story Studios, I heard some um, podcasts and interviews with him. And the amount of time that they put into crafting the game, the system, how everything works, um, something like seven years, which is just an insane amount of time to put into something like this, uh, Crane Dance, but it definitely shows. Cavden, the merchant. That's cool. And then a foil salt in the wound. Yeah, I agree. Um, Cy Temp is saying the magic direction is yuck right now. Um, it feels like their direction currently is um, to become a cardboard cannon and just fire out as much product as possible in as short amount of time as possible. And it is kind of sad. Um, I've played Magic for a really long time, although right now the only Magic that I play at this point is like sealed type formats. Oh, we got another Talishar. And another Edge of Autumn. 
and another foil salt the wound. The text on this salt the wound looks really weird. It's like really dark. Even the header on it is really dark compared to some of the other cards. It's weird. Um, so sealed, sealed play for um, Flesh and Blood is basically the same except for Crucible of War you can't really, you don't really want to put Crucible of War in there, um, especially in draft. It doesn't work in draft, but um, the basics is six packs, open it up, sort everything by class, and make a 40 card deck, 30 card deck. It's 30 and sealed. Um, and then, you know, you play from there. You, you play with young heroes. Um, you have any hero and weapon token available to you, um, as long as it's a token one. Um, even if you don't open it in your packs. So, a lot of, um, oh, two tokens there. Three tokens. Wow, this pack is something. Um, okay, so we have a Reinforce the Line. We have another Zephyr Needle and a Foil Rousing Aether, which is a cool looking foil. But yeah, uh, Wizard seems to be just, and maybe it's Hasbro doing it, but just wanting to fire out as much product as possible. So I hadn't played Magic in, a, in quite a long time, over a year, maybe more, and uh, people started doing um, sealed box commander leagues online um, during the pandemic and so I thought that sounded like fun I love limited um, I haven't really played very much commander so we have a rushing river uh, barraging bighorn and a foil whirling miss blossom which is cool looking <laughs> yeah, the Bob Ross lands. They, they are really nice looking. <clears throat> and at least those make some thematic sense, unlike the, um, the Walking Dead secret layer stuff, which I bought a few of as a potential sell later. But yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with uh, Sealed Box Commander. Um, so Promise of Plenty and High Speed Impact. There we go. Foil Mythic Feign Death. I'll take it. Yeah, so in that, you basically, you, you open a box. Um, the, the one I'm in, I did a Commander Legends one where you open a Commander Legends box and another one where you can open any box and I did Dragons of Tarkir. Uh, and you build a regular Commander deck out of everything you open in the whole box. It takes about an hour. I have videos on here. And, uh, yeah. That was crazy, Side Tempest. And when I heard Unlimited, when I saw the post about it, I immediately tried to buy more uh, of the alpha sets and first edition sets. Only thing I could get my hands on were two boxes of um, ARC. And so I have those uh, sealed. Um, that and I was able to buy a bunch of cold foil uh, equipment from the first two sets for like $80, $80 for like 10 or 15 of them, something like that. So I bought all those that I could find too. Okay, we got another cash in. Another Dauntless. And an Emerging Dominance foil. Yeah, when they when they initially jumped and they jumped to like, they were slowly rising and they were like 120 and then they jumped to like 300 and I was like, I, I don't know, I can't really justify spending 300 dollars 
on this box. And then, of course, now I wish that I had spent all the dollars on the boxes, but... Because who knew that even $300 a box was not enough. So we got the harmonized Kadachi facing the other direction. High speed impact. And another foil Mavri in skies, which looks really cool when the light hits it. There's one fabled in Crucible. Um, one fabled in... Uh, each of the three sets so far, actually. So there's um, Heart in the first set, Eye in the second set. Third set has the Arknight Shard, which is a vi uh, Viserai specific fabled uh, card. Um, and that's the only fabled in the set. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by the 1 in 10 chance. Okay, we have a Towering Titan, another Mythic, Poison the Tips, and a uh, Foil Chokeslam. Oh yeah, one in 10 cases. Gotcha. That would be great. What I'm really looking for, like the, of course it'd be great to get the Fabled, but what I'm really looking for is uh, Shiana. Um, I like the idea of the shapeshifter and I wanna play around with it. However, it's been noticed that a lot of cases that have a Shiana in them also have an Arknight Shard in the same case. Or the other way around. If it has an Arknight Shard, then it also tends to have Shiana in it. Uh, Rock Slide Trap. Cindering Foresight. And yet another foil. Increase the tension. Okay, we're almost done with this third box here. Uh, but yeah, one thing that, I, that I've been considering, because I've been having a lot of fun with the Commander, the Box Sealed Commander games, is doing something similar for uh, F Flesh and Blood, where people buy a box. It can be either Welcome to Wraith or Arcane Rising, whichever one you want. You open it on video of some kind or stream, um, or in like Discord video, just so somebody can see you open the box. Um, and then oh, we got a Barraging Bighorn. Mythic. Rune Blade Barrier. And another Foil uh, Brutal Assault. Um, so you open the box, sort everything, and then build the best, I don't know if it's Blitz deck or full deck, probably Blitz deck that you can build out of that box. Um, I have a couple variations that I've been playing with in my head. One is you build for one class out of the box and then you play the first week with that one and then the second week you play with a different class and you have to play with a different class each of the four weeks um, in each of your four rounds and just kind of, you know, see what you can do with that. Yeah, I agree. All the art in this game is great. It's just another one of those things. Attention to detail. The time they took to produce the game. It shows even in the art itself. So we have another Cindering Foresight. A Reinforce the Line. And that is a cool looking foil. Helix. It's a common, but it's cool looking. The foils in this game are just straight awesome. Like, there's so much detail in the art that when they foil it, it just goes and um, brings everything out. Okay. Brute Warrior. 
Ranger Ninja. Okay, we have the Dauntless. So many Dauntless. Reinforce the line. And a foil reinforce the line. So yeah, just for example, like looking at the two cards, let's see if I can get the foil to, to glint. But yeah, just how the foiling works and the parts of the card that that uh, show when you foil them. Yeah, the cold, cold foiling is such a great idea um, to do for like the, the limited stuff. Because it's just another one of those like little touches that people can show when they're playing face to face like Oh, cool, you got that one in cold foil. You know, it kind of shows, like, either how long you've been playing the game, you know, at some point, you think a couple years down the road, or um, <laughs> the art on this card is so good. Uh, tripwire Trap. Promise of Plenty. Oh, and we got a... Wow, that foil is really nice. We have a Mythic Absorption Dome foil. So since we're talking about art, which card in, the, in Flesh and Blood has your favorite piece of art on it so far? Of all the cards and all the art you've seen, what is like your favorite go-to piece of art in this game? Okay, we got another cash in. Another Mavrian Skies. And Foil Rousing at Aether. Hamstring Shot is good. Um, headshot too, the foil headshot, I think is, is pretty cool looking. A lot of the ranger cards, like there's so many ranger cards that I love the art for. It's one of the reasons that that's one of the classes that I, I'm really into. Wait, where did I put warrior? Okay, that's wizard. This is warrior. All right. Okay, so we have another Towering Titan. Oh, look. We got another Twinning Blade. Still not the super cool fancy one, but I'll take it. And then a Foil Dauntless. So we've got two Twinning Blades so far in three boxes. Very, very nice. Okay, we have a Rockside Trap, a Promise of Plenty, and Foil Rare, Reinforce the Line. Anybody else? What's your favorite uh, piece of art in the game so far? So Crane Dance, another Dauntless, and another Foil Snapback. I hear you on that one, Wheezy. Blackout Kick. That was, I believe I saw Blackout Kick in one of the first couple packs that I opened. <clears throat> like I got a Blackout Kick and I, I just sat there looking at it and just going... Wow, I don't think that I would. I don't think I've seen a piece of art like that um, in really any other card game that I've played. The way that it's like very violent and very graphic, but also 
uh, understated in how it shows it. Okay, we got another Centauri Saber. So now we have two in, in here. A Plasma Barrel Shot. There. And then a Foil Predatory Assault. And that is box three. Right? You, you're opening the first couple packs and you see something like that and you're just like, everything about that art is just exactly on point. Oh, this box is a little... All right, last box. There's still hope. Oh, that's wizard. Bring the shirt. All right. Towering Titan. Another Centering Foresight. Oh, there we go. Foil Copper Token with the foiling just like on the coins in the glove. It's just really cool looking. I know, right? Let's hit that legend. Any legend. Guardian, Ranger, Warrior, Brute. It's interesting. All the piles are relatively the same, except for Ninja and Guardian are just like a little bit higher. Oh, we have a uh, Mavrian Skies. Another tripwire trap and a foil brutal assault. I've gotten so many of those in foil. Okay, Dauntless. Oh, we got another Perch Grapplers. That's our second one of those. Or no, it's not. We got Breeze Rider Boots, and now we got Perch Grapplers. Although in the, the other boxes of Crucible I opened, I got a Cold Foil of, of that one. And then a Foil Braging Bighorn. Yeah, I did open a foil perch uh, grapplers in one of my other boxes. Okay, oop, oh. high speed impact. Reinforce the line. Foil riled up. Yeah, uh, that's right, Psy Tempest. Um, leg legendaries in Crucible are only Shiana and the Tunic. That's Wizard. Uh, Warrior. Okay, we got another Mavrian Skies. Another Sindering Foresight. And another one with some sick art. Foil Mythic, or I keep saying that, not Mythic, Foil Majestic, Mangle. That's a nice pull. Okay, Barraging Bighorn, another Mythic Massacre. This card, for being a rare, is exceedingly hard to find, to get in boxes. This foil lunging press.
foil lunging press seems to be because you can I think you can only get it in foil. It's really hard to get out of crucible. So if you have any foil ones of those, like it's not the same as any foil rare. Mainly because you can only get it in foil. But they did that so that it would make it legal to play. Which is nice. So barraging, rushing river, foil choke slam. So how many people have pre-orders already for Monarch? And if so, how many boxes? What's a good number? Because Monarch is supposed to be a bigger set than any of the sets that have been out yet. Um, not by a ton, but, oh sorry, Crane Dance, Dauntless, and Overblast foil. Oh, sure. Um, depending on who you buy from, you can definitely pre-order. Um, I've got boxes pre-ordered through Team Covenant. Um, they have a subscription service that you can sign up for, and they also give exclusive promos. Uh, the exclusive promo for their last, um, for Crucible, was a full art foil um, scar for a scar, uh, which currently goes for around $300 on, on the open market. Uh, you got one per box with them. Um, I also have, there's a, a guy I follow on Patreon called uh, Deck Edge. Um, his name's Jason. I uh, have boxes reserved through him. Okay, we have a rushing river. Oh, I think I saw something good. Promise of Plenty. I mean, good, but not that good. So we have a Cold Foil Centauri Saber. Right facing. Yeah, I upped my, my subscription for Monarch from four boxes, which is what I did for Crucible, to six boxes. Mainly so I can get two play sets of whatever exclusive foil they end up with. Okay, we have a Data Doll, a High Speed Impact. There we go. That's nice. Foil KO. Oop, there we go. Nice. The foil young heroes are kind of hard to get too. That's the first one I think I've opened in four boxes. Okay, Mavrian Skies, Pitfall Trap, Foil Mythic, Fine Center. That is cool looking. Every time I see a new foil that I haven't seen before, I just have to stare at it for a second. Wizard, Guardian. Okay, Cindering Foresight, Rushing River, and another foil increase the tension. Um, I'm, I'm open to both. Um, I've played Blitz and Constructed with my wife. Um, I actually think I like Blitz as like a regular format to play. <clears throat> the games are quicker. It's easier to teach, I think. And 
like if you're playing multiple rounds in a store, I think Blitz is going to be the way to go until that's like maybe regionals or nationals or something like that. So my preference preference right now is uh, actually with Blitz. Oh, we got another copper token. Okay, Rock Slide Trap. Aetherize, Mythic. First one of those in these boxes. And Foil Rousing Aether. How about you, Wheezy? What is your what is your format of choice? Okay, we have a Zephyr Needle. Nice. Gorganian Tomb. Tome. Gorgan Gorganian Tome. Ooh. And a Foil Pathing Helix. That Gorganian Tome is worth something. All of the mythic um, generics are seem way less um, in the packs, seem harder to get. Okay, Crane Dance, Pitfall Trap, Foil Hit and Run. Yeah, especially when you're learning the game, I think Blitz is just so much more accessible because, you know, the games are quick, they're over, you can make changes to your deck and then set up again and just play, and you can just crank out games like over and over again. Which is really nice. Okay, another Saber, another Bighorn, and... One that I got to show the foil off for. There we go. Torrent of Tempo. And another really nice thing so far about the game anyway is the community is so helpful. They're so great. Um, the Discord is really nice. If you have questions about how the game works, people are more than happy to answer. I get on the Discord um, when I have time and I answer rules questions. I mainly answer rules questions on the, the Facebook group, the rule group. Promise of Plenty. Reinforce the line. And yet another Foil Pathing Helix. Yeah, Sealed's great. Just being able to open a few packs and build something that's playable. One thing I've noticed from opening a lot of packs, uh, especially Welcome to Wraith and Arcane Rising, the way they distribute the class cards, <clears throat> there's always like two of at least two classes. One may have three, and then there's like at least one card from the other two classes. And it's consistent and it switches around from pack to pack. Which means that when you get done opening a bunch of packs, like the cards are relatively even, um, which gives you a lot of options for opening or for building um, in a sealed environment. Okay, we got a Zen State. I think that's our third one. Uh, Righteous Cleansing Mythic. That's nice. And another foil, Increase the Tension. Yeah, anybody anybody watching who's interested in the game, hit up the the Discord, hit up the uh, Facebook groups for the game. Everybody is super helpful. Um, you can comment if you're watching this on YouTube. You can comment on the video and uh, ask questions. Um, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so we have a 
another Mavrian Skies, and a Crane Dance, and a Foil Cash-In. The way it highlights that red is really cool. Okay, I have a YouTube channel as well. This is being streamed both to Twitch and YouTube currently, um, which is why I keep looking on this side. I have the Twitch chat right in front of me, but I have uh, the restream chat on this side, which looks at all the sources so that I can see if people comment on YouTube. Um, but yeah, all my videos are archived to YouTube. Uh, Alright, High Speed Impact, Rushing River, Foil Promise of Plenty. We've got three or four packs. I know one of my legendaries in uh, Welcome to Wraith I opened in the very last pack, in the last box that I opened. So, maybe that's a trend for me. We'll see. Mavrian Skies, Promise of Plenty, Foil Blessing of Serenity. So would anybody who's uh, watching here be interested in playing the game online? Is that something you've looked into or something you're thinking about looking into? Or are you just kind of waiting out? Uh, the pandemic shutdowns and whatnot until you can play in person. Okay, we got another Sledge, another Towering Titan, and then another Foil Hit and Run. Oh, playing on Tabletop Simulator, okay. Yeah, there's a fair number of people playing uh, Flesh and Blood on Tabletop Simulator. Okay, Pitfall Trap, Mythic Rattlebones, and another Foil Push Forward. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's a better way, uh, but like how we're playing uh, Sealed Commander games is via, there's a website called Spelltable.com which it's mainly geared for magic, but it's a free site that you can use. Um, and what it does is it takes your webcam. So I use this cam with the face inset um, when I play on there. And <clears throat> basically it just links, links people together in an easy way and you can play online uh, using your regular cards like on your table. A lot of people just use like a webcam that they put up above um, and that's fine. Token, token. So I don't know if that's that's a better way, but it is a way that you can use your cards. Uh, so we got a mandible, another mythic fine center. I think that's three, and then a foil flying kick. All right, so that's it. There's no more boxes. However, I do have some more boxes over there. Should I open one more box? What do you guys think? Um, but yeah, Jake in Utah. Um, I'm in I'm in Las Vegas, actually. Um, but yeah, getting getting your local game stores to support the game is eventually how we're gonna we're gonna all go. Like that's what we want. That's that's how we're gonna play the game. Okay, give me one sec. I'm gonna put my mic down. Go grab a box. And ta-da, we have another box. Ooh. 
Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, but don't worry, I have I have more boxes. So sealed value is uh, something that I'm going to be keeping as well. <clears throat> I just wish I had some of my uh, arc boxes still. But I opened them all before Unlimited was announced and then it was too hard to get uh, more. All right. Okay, high speed impact, Barraging Bighorn, and Foil Rune Chant token. Always a favorite. Yeah, I can understand that, Jake. Um, Jake's saying that he'd rather play in person to learn the game better. Um, which is definitely uh, reasonable. Um, I would recommend, though, if you really want to just learn the game, besides watching people play it online or whatever, uh, like Team Covenant, they've done, they've done a bunch of plays, is to <clears throat> get on the Discord, find somebody to jump on a Tabletop Simulator for you. I think it was either last weekend or it still could be on sale on Steam. Um, jump on Tabletop Simulator with some people and have them show you how to play. Like, <clears throat> everybody, uh, you'll have no problem finding somebody to do that with you. Okay, reinforce the line. Red liner. Foil, Torrent of Tempo. All right, that's a common. Um, it's not a, it's not a dumb question at all, Jake. Uh, Jake's asking if the stores in Vegas are, uh, doing games right now or if it's all shut down. So <clears throat> everything's supposed to be shut down. There are a few stores in town that are running games, even like draft and stuff where people are passing cards, um, and have been this entire time that everything's been shut down. Uh, I don't agree with it. I don't, I don't, uh, patronize some of those stores anymore. Um, I understand it's hard for them because, you know, they, when they're shut down, they're, they're not getting very much revenue or whatever, but at the same time, like it's, it's just not safe in my opinion. So, <clears throat> uh, Mavrian Skies, Cindering Foresight and a foil high-speed impact. So I I don't, the I actually buy <clears throat> most of my other games, uh, my Magic Boxes, um, my Arkham Horror stuff, um, my Marvel Champion stuff through, through one of the local game stores here in town. I just have uh, a standing thing with them where if something new comes out, they just order it for me and then what we've been doing is I've just been having them ship it to my house once a month or whatever. And uh, that's how I've been supporting my local game store. Um, the one that I, that I enjoy playing at um, and the, has the people that I, I enjoy like being around. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's uh, I, I recommend no matter what everybody should be trying to buy stuff through their local game store if they can if they carry it oh we got another cold foil cold foil ether conduit that is cool looking i've gotten a bunch of cold foil weapons in these boxes Yeah, Psy Tempest, I saw that on the uh, NA Trade site. Um, that is that is crazy. I have cold foils of all of the non-legendaries, I believe. I might be missing one, um, but I have <clears throat> I have all of those. 
I don't have all the legendaries because, you know. Too much going on there. All right, Mavrian Skies, Cindering Foresight, and another foil, Rousing Aether. Jake, what's your favorite class? I know you said you haven't really learned how to play, but just from looking at the cards, I assume you've looked at a bunch of cards and stuff. What class calls to you? Reinforce the line, barraging bighorn, foil out for blood. One thing that Crucible really piqued my interest with is so they added new weapons. For, for all the classes, and they added new heroes, young heroes, for all the classes. Not all the classes, that's a lie, for, for a lot of the classes. Um, what's interesting, though, is taking, like, Centauri Sabers and giving them to Dur Dorinthia changes the way you want to build her deck and you want to, the way you want to play her. Using Kasai, I think is her name, the, the other warrior, um, and using her with either Sabers or with... Uh, Dawn Blade makes you want to build those in completely different ways. And I think it's so cool that such a small change, one piece of equipment or one hero card, there's, speaking of, there's Kasai now, uh, can change the way Stamp Authority Mythic, or did it again, Majestic. Ooh, Foil Majestic. Chain Lightning. That's, that's no problem, Jake. I have time. I've got at least 20 more packs, I think. Who, Man, those golden equipments. I tell you, Legend Story Studios has made so many good choices. And the fact that their prizes aren't cash so far, they don't do a cash circuit. They're just like, here, here's this, like, maybe one of a kind card that no one else will ever be able to get. Um, and that alone is enough of a prize where people are just like all over it. Cindering Foresight, high speed impact. Foil Soul Bead Strike. People definitely believe in the game. Um, and it makes sense. Um, in the interview that I heard with James, the founder, um, he talked about how when COVID hit, they had an opportunity to either just shut everything down, hibernate for a year or two, and then try to relaunch the game um, at a later point. Or just go for it. And, of course, they went for it. Uh, ooh, Flood of Force Mythic. And then Torn of Tempo Foil. But the idea is that they have... They have money, they've had investors into this game where they're not going, oh man, if Crucible doesn't sell or Monarch doesn't sell, we're done. We're just going to have to pack up. They know that it's going to take time and money to, to make this thing happen. And so they're perfectly okay with, you know, burning cash, so to speak, for a year or two to try and establish. And in doing so, you know, make competitive circuits and have national championships. Uh, he specifically mentioned national championships and just like national pride and, and that kind of thing being a big draw to people. I think it's really smart. 
Boyle Mythic, Fine Center. Brute. Okay. And have you, and Jake, have you looked at um, the difference between the two Brute Heroes? So we have Reinar. And we have KO. And like how their abilities are different. Oop. There we go. Move that over a little bit. There we go. And if so, or if not, it has one of the two heroes like drawn you. Or is it just the idea of Brute in general? Just the big, like, I'm here to bash something. Oop. Yeah, that's... All right. Okay, another Towering Titan. Another Mythic. Man, a lot of Mythics in the last couple packs. Uh, Gaze of the Ages. And another foil choke slam. Yeah, I, I get that. Ko is cool. Like all the art is cool, but yeah, him having the the double mandible claws just going to town. Brute, rune blade, guardian. That's not warrior. Warrior. So would you guys be interested if I um, figured out a time? Let's see, Mavrian Skies. Another KO. And a foil promise of plenty. Uh, if I figured out some time to sit down <clears throat> and like build a blitz deck or build a couple blitz decks um, and talked about cards for specific classes. Um, and things like that. Would anybody be interested in, in uh, hanging out and doing something like that? Ninja Brute. Okay, Mavrian Skies again. Reinforce the line. And Foil reinforce the line. Oh, sorry, say again. Okay, so my question was, <clears throat> would anybody be interested if I figured out some time to stream where instead of doing a pack opening like this, I would take a specific class and just sit down and build a deck for Blitz probably to start, um, talk about the cards, talk about the class, um, figure out which hero and uh, do that stuff live on stream, interactive, That was the question. Okay, Pitfall Trap, Rock Slide Trap, Foil Blessing of Serenity. <laughs> okay, so that's a that's a good place to start and a good thing to talk about, like. You know, this game has formats like most other games. What what are those formats and how do they differ? So <clears throat> the two most common formats um, in Flesh and Blood are Blitz and Standard Constructed. So the difference between the two is Blitz is 20 card decks. Sorry, that's completely wrong. Um, Blitz uses the young heroes, so you only have 20 life, is what I meant to say. Um, whereas Standard Constructed, you use the adult heroes, they have 40 life. So that's the first difference. The second difference is the size of your deck. Um, in Standard Constructed, you bring 80 cards. You reveal your hero when you sit down to play your opponent. 
You then take cards out of your deck. So you pre-sideboard um, based on what their hero is. So you take cards out of your deck down to a minimum of 60. In Blitz, it's... I want to get this right. I want to say it's 40 card decks. 40 card decks, young hero, and it's exactly 40 card decks in Blitz. The difference being you can bring 11 pieces of equipment, and then once you reveal your hero and your opponent reveals theirs, you can choose which equipment you're going to start with. So that's the main differences between the two formats. And then there's a the third format, which is Ultimate Pit Fighter, which is a multiplayer format that the game has. So we have Dauntless. We have a non-foil Ether Conduit. And a foil Flying Kick. But yeah, so for instance, um, you can see Ko is a young hero. He doesn't have an adult version. You can't play him currently in Standard Constructed. I'm a liar. You can play him in Standard Constructed, but you start with 20 life, which is a terrible, terrible idea. Um, and then Reinar has 40 life as an adult. Um, but there is a non-adult version of him. There's, there's a young version of him as well that you can play. Generic. Crane Dance. Rushing River. Oh, that's nice. Foil. Ira, it's hard to see the foil on there. There he goes. That was good. Those young heroes are hard, hard to get in foil. Oh, I don't want that there. But yeah, I hope that answers at least like an overview of the difference between the formats. Um, I believe in Ultimate Pit Fighter also you, you use full constructed decks. Okay, Crane Dance, Centauri Saber, Foil Choke Slam. Man, we're, we're no legendaries. This will be, this is the Fifth box I've opened tonight, I opened four boxes previous to this. So that's nine boxes, no legendary. Prajin Bighorn, Mavrian Skies, Foil Foreboding Bolt. Yeah, Jake, I could definitely see that being a, a helpful video or stream for someone to watch. Um, if you're interested in that, I would recommend checking out two, two different things. Um, if you go to Team Covenant's YouTube channel, way back near their first Flesh and Blood videos where they're just kind of learning to play, they kind of do that same thing. They both don't really know how to play. They sit down, one of them read the rule book, and they just kind of start going from there. Uh, there's some stuff they get wrong and gets corrected on stream and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's a good place to start. Another one is uh, Channel Fireball's YouTube channel. They have also started doing flesh and blood content. Um, the very first video, or maybe one of the first like two or three videos they put out was... Uh, LSV and his brother sitting down with the Ira starter decks or learn to play decks or whatever they're called and just playing. 
Brajim Bighorn, Promise of Plenty, Foil, Rousing Aether. All right, like four or five more packs, and then I'm not going to open another box. Not tonight. The odds do not seem to be in my favor. All right, reinforce the line. Feign death. Foil research notes. Oh, it looks like the uh, the link got blocked by Twitch. But yeah, if you go, if you just go to YouTube and you just search "flesh and blood," like most of the videos that pop up will be Team Covenants. You'll probably see the Channel Fireball ones there near near the top two, and then just go to their actual channel and you'll see the stuff. So Tripwire Trap, Rushing River, Foil Sleep Dart, yeah it looks like Twitch itself is blocking the, the link. I don't even see a way of, of interacting with that. Okay, high speed impact. Another plasma purifier. That's our third plasma purifier. And foil promise of plenty. Twitch is out to get you, Tempest. That's Ninja. All right. So Mavrian Skies, Crane Dance, Predatory Assault Foil. Last pack. Does this one have a Legendary in it? I'm thinking probably not. But... Okay, yes, Alpha Rampage is sweet. I think I have one in foil. I can definitely see why that would have drawn you to Brute. It's the Plasma Pistol. Okay. Mavrian Skies. Arg. Smash. Mythic and foil hit and run. So that is nine boxes, no legendary in Crucible of War. That is sad times. Although I did get some some good hits. Gorgonian Garganian Gorganian Tomb. Gorganian Tome. I got double Coax of Commotion. Um, two twinning blades. I got all of the equipment, I think. Um, two of them in cold foil, the plasma purifier and the crater fist. So... I'm not that sad. I got some good stuff. Double Massacre, one of them in foil. Some foil young heroes. So, all right. <clears throat> well, that's enough for me tonight. It is now 12.45 a.m. my time. I've been streaming for two hours. I'm going to call it a night. I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, 
feel free to follow. I'll stream more Flesh and Blood stuff. Um, I also stream, like I said, Magic stuff. I'm going to be streaming at some point some Middle Earth CCG because it's fun and you can play it solo. Uh, yeah, so if you want to hang out, if you want to do that, just uh, follow me here and or on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, we'll do that. And I will see you guys next time. So night, everybody. Thank you.